Your mom was so fat. She tripped over Kmart. Tripped over Walmart. Landed on Target. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I've never heard of that one before. That's pretty good. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Anime Club After Dark, the podcast that delves into all things anime, manga, and otaku culture related. I'm your host, Alex, but you can call me Senpai. And joining me tonight, I have our czar of source material, John. Tastes like salt. Yeah, I, I bet it does. I, I really bet it does. <laughs> uh, we also have our mother lover, Chinoda. <laughs> He's a mother lover. She's a mother lover. We all love each other's mothers. I don't... Is this a song? Yes. Lonely oh. Island. Mother Lover. Man, that's a name I haven't heard in a while. I only know, like, two Lonely Island songs. <laughs> Bro, you need to no, get... No, three. Him. I know three. Which three? So... Um, I Just Had Sex, okay. uh, Dick in a Box, and... Okay. Um... Mother Lover is the final one in that trilogy. No, no, it's, um... <laughs> it's not gay. If it's in a three-way, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, got some honey in the middle. There's some leeway. I'm surprised you didn't it, mention it, the song they made with Michael Bolton. I don't know what song that is. It's Bro, Jack you Sparrow. Need look, you need oh. to look up all their songs. You would love it. It's so. Stupid. Oh, you know what? I also I do also know "Jizzed in My Pants," <laughs> the one that oh. I I started that got me into listening to Lonely Island when I was in middle school, high school. Long time, oh, a million years school. ago. <laughs> I think it was high school. It might have been high school, bro. Well, anyway, uh, the three of us are here because, um, well, Mother's Day was was yesterday. At least it will be when this episode goes out. <laughs> Stop um, letting people know that. We recorded <laughs> this at the stroke of midnight. <laughs> they don't yeah. know anything any better. No, it's not midnight outside. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Stop <laughs> exposing my lie! <laughs> There's literally light outside. It is not we midnight. lifting the veil on the movie magic that we have as a production. I literally lifted the veil. It's a fucking veil. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, um, so happy Mother's Day uh, to all the mothers out there, especially mine. Hi, Mom. I know you watch her stuff. <laughs> true. Uh, Hi, Judy. Hi, Judy. <laughs> <laughs> and we are going to get together to talk about some of our favorite uh, mothers in uh, anime. Now, when I say mothers, I don't just mean moms. I mean the people that you would call mommy, too. <laughs> I regret adding this as a question and then it becoming <laughs> a statement. I honestly regret. I was just confused. I love I was the like, fact that you followed that up right after saying hi to your mom, Alex. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> hey, man. This no, is an no. Oedipus episode, actually. No, um, no, no, no. <laughs> I want to start off the episode by talking about the actual hottest anime mom of all time. Mm. Jimmy's mom. I hate this. Oh, no. I thought you were going to say Stacy's mom. No, no, Jimmy's mom. Because I hear Stacy's mom does indeed have it going on. No, I, I just wanted to make that Jimmy's mom joke. Sorry. It came up to my mind earlier when you said Judy. <laughs> Wait, yeah, because her name is Judy Neutron. Yes, exactly. That's why I, I was forgot like, about that. Jimmy's mom. Jimmy's mom. <laughs> Uh, before before, before we actually get into it, I do want to remind everyone, um, if you like what you see here, do uh, like this episode down below. Also, leave us a comment letting us know what some of your favorite moms uh, in anime are and the characters that you call mommy. Um, also, don't forget to subscribe if you do want to see more. Let's actually talk about moms. Wait, so if they don't want to see any more, do they unsubscribe even though they're not subscribed? No, no, no. I would prefer they didn't. <laughs> I would prefer they didn't. <laughs> Just asking. I need to know the logistics. Okay. Well, anyway, let's talk about moms. Um, I'm 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 confused as to where I want to start. Do I want to start with an actual mom or a mommy? All right. Well, actual because mom. I don't like just like gut and horny off rip. You know, you got to tingle my balls a little bit. Okay. Um, let's talk about Hana from Wolf Children. Okay. Because and now she like, took that wolf dick. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I hate being here. 
I might, I might just quit. <laughs> He's gonna walk out right now. <laughs> Fuck, I'm done. <laughs> Alex, did you did you just have to go go into bestiality straight away? Is, yeah, is that man. what I we're mean, doing dude, now? I just, I just to sat be down, fair, man. it's like ten minutes into the movie when the movie goes into it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. true. That is very true. Uh, but no, Hama from Wolf Children, I, genuinely good mother, right? Like, let, let bestiality aside, she's a great mother to her, shall we say, mixed race children. Mixed species. Um, Get it right. I mean, she's a great mother because she sacrifices so much for the kids to try to make it so they can live a normal life. Um, she literally can't afford to live in the city anymore. And it's like, all right, we're going to live in the countryside. And she does all this hard work to restore this farm yeah, to be able to become self sufficient. She literally becomes a like, farmer. Yeah, she she sacrifices a lot for her children mm. to try to make them grow up happy. And it's just like, you know, um, what I would assume is a good mother. <laughs> what what good mothers would do is anything for their children to make sure that they live a uh, happy and long life. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And for a majority of the movie, or at least a majority of her time as a mother, she's also a single mother, which makes it even doubly hard on her. Um, so she has to sacrifice even more than she ever wanted to. Um, and I was, I was about to start going into the review about wolf children. I was like, and also it's a perfect representation because not only is the mom caring and loving, there's also strife between her and her kids and they have to resolve it. And I'm just like, it's, it, it explores the human relationship with your mom. And it's just like, and I'm like, wait, we're not talking about wolf children. We have a movie review though. It, yes, we do out. have a movie review. And if you have not seen it, you definitely should check it out. It'll be right up. Hold on. Right up there somewhere. <laughs> You know, originally when we were going to do this, I thought we were going to do a ranking list. <laughs> oh, really? Um, Bro, why? I don't know. I, I, In my mind, I don't remember how our dad episode went. I don't remember what we did. It was did a long were... time ago. It was back in, like, 2021. Oh. Well, anyway, to me, I think Hana is, like, an S-tier mom. Like, she, oh, yeah. She's just human, but she does everything to the best of her ability and tries to shelter her children. Even when she doesn't know what to do, she still tries to raise them. And it's just like, yeah. Oh, Dude, it's such a good movie. Like, it, John, it is. I, I hate that it took me so long to watch Wolf Children. <laughs> it was worth John, it. I, I honestly disagree. I think oh. she's a triple S tier mom. Triple S tier, yeah. I think she goes above and beyond. She does everything possible. She is like one of, if not the most uh, admirable mothers in anime. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, at the end of the movie, when she realized like her one of her kids needs to go their own way. Like, she finds it hard to accept, but she eventually accepts it. And it's like, you know, just visit once a year or something. And it's like, oh, oh call your moms. Say hello to your moms, you kids. You it literally made monsters. Me it's literally making me right now. Me I, mean, yeah, I, mean, I mean, listen, a very similar movie that has that sort of effect is Makia. And Makia, is, as a character, is the exact same way. Like, she's out there as a single mother doing her best. And, like... It sometimes doesn't feel like it's enough. I have not seen Machia. Oh, you should. Oh, it's a fucking phen phenomenal movie. <laughs> I know I should. I edited the episode, so I, I basically watched it <laughs> when you guys <laughs> talked about it. Yeah, that was another movie <laughs> review we did a long time ago. Still haven't watched it. Heard nothing oh but wonderful God. things about it. You I know. to fucking watch this movie. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> Let's talk about this mom that we don't know nothing about. Wow. No, but Maki, a lot like Hana, is a single mom who's just, she's sacrificing so much. She's doing her best, especially for a child that's not even biologically hers. Uh, it It's it's tragic to watch because you, I think a lot of mothers feel this way. I know my mom kind of felt this way, especially when I moved out. It's like, you have to let go. It's like that learning to let go thing. And then when she meets her son at the very end of the... Oh, it's, a, it's such a heartbreaking scene. Oh! Tears. I'm watering. My eyes are watering just thinking about it now. Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> oh, Pop oh my goodness. His mic Pop is falling filter. apart. Stay. Give it a treat. <laughs> Don't actually give it food. <laughs> no, stop. Oh, my God. 
But anyway, yeah, like for those who haven't seen it, <laughs> for those who haven't seen it, uh, Machia is a phenomenal movie. Great mother, great character. Um, it's absolutely heartbreaking at the end. Um, but if you have seen Wolf Children, you uh, you kind of have a glance into what the character of Machia is like if you know how Hannah is as a mother. Or Hannah. Hannah. Yeah. Hannah. There's like a... There's a lot of... <laughs> Almost. At, hold on. Let me see. One, two, three. There are three moms on my list that are all about self-sacrifice and like bettering, doing, uh, doing so to better the future of their children. And um, it's kind of just a common theme for me. Like what I what I would consider a good mom. Like I remember we watched uh, Erased, um, mm. and the mom in Erased, uh, Sachiko Fujinuma. Yeah. I remember saying, like, this is one of the best anime moms I've ever seen in my life. Like, she's taking care of her son who's been in a coma for, like, 10 years or something at this point, right? Or yeah. 20 years or something. It's long been a very long time, yeah. And you see her, like, she visits every day. She talks to him, and it's like she, she massages his feet to make sure he, his muscles don't atrophy too much. And she does as much as she can. And it's just like, it's so fucking sad. I'm like, oh, my God. The strife that this mom is going through because she loves her son that much and like she's still there caring for him mm-hmm. even though there's like medical staff and like you can get she can get nurses and stuff to do all this stuff she still does it herself because she wants to yeah it's just like that's true motherly love right there yeah it truly is john Especially... i wonder does all these choices that you uh have made is it a bit of a reflection from your personal life I wouldn't say so. <laughs> <laughs> I have. I was wondering no. where, where were you going with that? Were you just like this is no, the I'm kind of woman he wants? I have an idealized version of what a good mom should be. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say that people in real life are human, so they can they have flaws. Certainly, yeah. my mother has flaws, but. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about I mean what and having <laughs> getting older and having more perspective like when you're a kid you don't notice how much um your parents sacrifice for you absolutely and not you only remember mostly the negative things and it's like yeah the negative things were bad in my life and I you know a lot of I've heard quite a lot that you know I should hold it against my parents but I don't because I you know they had their own circumstances too man they're they're only human right yeah Their kids raising kids and they didn't have their own support systems and it's it's all kind of fucked but you know to, to stop the chain of hate this is like this is how i would want to be as a father and how i would want my wife to be as a mother i have these versions of like we're not going to fuck up our kid and then you congratulations fuck up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well that's for all other reasons <laughs> well everyone they you know no parent wants to fuck up their kids you know they, they want to try well most parents i should say yeah. Um, want what's best for their children and I, I just feel like a lot of the moms on my list are like that like mm. another one I'm gonna talk about Chi Chi let me talk about Chi Chi bro oh like, boy I Here fucking we go. love Chi Chi alright I just bro I've you talked know. multiple times about how much Chi Chi is she a baddie bro like oh my god <laughs> y'all don't understand right I don't know if you this... know or not but she's very hated in the Dragon Ball fandom because they're all dumb. Because yeah, they're, they're all, all thirteen. Because they all think Bulma is is the best mom. No, it's Chi Chi. She only wanted what was best for Gohan. That's why she made him study so hard. That's how he became a super Doctor Saiyan lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually remember what Gohan becomes. Maybe an engineer or something. <laughs> Generic company. Either. And he, he's like middle management or some shit. He does paperwork. That That's what if he you, does. If so you have a good mother, you too can become a middle manager. <laughs> no, I, I like Chi Chi a lot because she, not only as a, a mother, but as a wife, like she, she's mean and right. Like she's like, what the fuck, Goku, come back here. Stop, stop going off and fighting people and fighting gods and stuff. Come raise your child. But then she's like, she still cooks. She still cleans. She still uh, makes sure that Gohan has his studies and also trains. All right. She's strict, but she's fair. 
in my opinion. Which actually, going back to what you said about Sachiko, she's kind of the same way because in the in the mo- or the show Erased, like she's not opposed to telling her own kid you're fucking wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is really good. Uh, trade in the mother. They're, they're willing to tell you otherwise. Yeah, they're not just going to spoil you and say, yeah, you're a good little boy. You do it. You're, you're everything you do is great. It's like, no, a good mother will tell you, hey, you fucked up. Yeah, I, I feel like having discipline in your life is not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, when I say discipline your children, I don't mean like beat the shit out of them in public they, like they used to do in the 60s and 70s or whatever. How dare you look down on our Asian ways and heritage, John? No, no, John. You, you, no, you, you there's said, a difference. What you said is right, though. You don't do it in public. You do it in private. Well, that way there are no difference. witnesses. There's a difference from getting hit with la chancla and getting the shit kicked out of you for no reason, okay? There is a difference, yeah, in my is. opinion. I. That's that's how I personally feel. Look, all right? I know a thing oh. or two about getting hit with one of these. Okay, it's it's not fun. Yeah, like that's a whole different freaking thing about. But point is, I think she she is a pretty decent mom. You know, a tier at least for me. I maybe <laughs> everyone else thinks I'm wrong. It's a B or a C or an F tier, whatever. I don't care. So like. Shinoda, you I, mentioned that she, because I didn't know that Chi Chi was like reviled or not mm-hmm. as well respected in the Dragon Ball fandom. Why? Well, first Besides of the all, they're, all they're immature. They're they're mainly immature man babies. That yeah, like, I was about to say, like, is it because like do they all hate Chi Chi because they're Dragon Ball fans? Like, <laughs> I like uh, Dragon I mean, Ball. Kind of, yeah, I don't like Dragon Ball fans. <laughs> like, yeah. Me with every fandom I'm in. <laughs> was, it's, it's, you see, see that a lot of shonen, right? Like, sometimes shonen can be really good. Shonen fans, however, are pieces of shit. I hate them. Revile them. Um, no, so... A lot of people don't like how... Uh, how obsessive she was and how overbearing she was. And it's like... I feel like a lot of them have never stopped to think about yeah, she's just trying to raise a, a, a kid in a normal way, in a very weird world with In a remote husband. location when her husband's always out fighting fucking shit. And her husband's a fucking alien. Uh, yeah, like... <laughs> it, it's just she's in a very difficult circumstances and very strange circumstances. And she was a princess to begin with. Like that's true. Yep. Everything about her life is super weird and out there, and she's just trying to do her best by her uh, kids. Hmm. And honestly, it's extremely admirable. But like a lot of people in the fandom don't actually like any sort of death. Well, these are you guys got to remember. These are Dragon Ball people. Well, not even Dra- Dragon, Dragon Ball is good. Yeah. This is Dragon Ball Z people. These people <laughs> don't like death or nuance. They're like. Ah! That's what they like. They don't like actual thinking. Dragon Ball Z fans, the type of people to be pissed off when people are like, could Goku beat them in a fight? Like, yeah, of course Goku could. <laughs> could Goku, could Goku, Goku beat, beat a man? black hole in a fight? I, I hate our scale battles so much. Oh I, my God. I do so much, too. Oh. That's that's weird though. I mean, I guess it just kind of goes to like the whole shonen fan bases being bad though. I thought you were gonna say it's like because she's a woman. <laughs> There's a woman in my shonen. No, surprising enough, uh, they're not that sexist uh, over in the Dragon Ball Z fandom. <laughs> Good job, what? Dragon Ball fans. You're not <laughs> just that hate... sexist. You're not that sexist. They just hate Chi Chi. Like what? <laughs> yeah, no, no. Like all the other uh, female fighters, they they fucking love. They they think they're cool as shit. They just hate Chi Chi in particular because she's a mother. Now I wonder if that's changed because of like the the reboot of Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Super. No. Is that what it is? No, no, it hasn't changed. No, it hasn't changed. That's so odd to me. I don't know. Yeah, that's but anyway, odd to me. Chinoda, I also have another question for you. Don't tell me about how good your mama is. <laughs> I was gonna save that for last. God damn it! No, we're t- we're talking about it now. <laughs> You ruined it. Ruined it. Ruined the joke, man. How could you? You should have well, listed it last. I guess. 
Yo mama. <laughs> That's so fat. <laughs> when she jump up, she gets stuck in the air. <laughs> Yo mama's so fat, she needs her own area code. <laughs> Yo mama had a picture taken of her. The graphics card glitched out. <laughs> Damn, that's a lot of memory it used, man. <laughs> Your mom was so fat. She tripped over Kmart. Tripped over Walmart. Landed on Target. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I've never heard of that one before. That's pretty good. That's an old one. I remember that from a long time I've ago. I've never heard that, but that's good. I like that. I like that oh. a lot. <sighs> but this <sighs> is your ACAD reminder. Call your mom. Tell her, uh, yeah. tell her you love her. Please. Now, for real though, talk about Kobayashi because she's pretty cool. Kobayashi from Dragon Maid is one of my favorite all-time mothers from anime. Her and Kana's relationship is the most beautiful parts uh, of the entire anime for me. And whenever it's specific scenes of just them two doing mother-daughter stuff... I fucking ball like a baby. I love it. It's so heartwarming. It's so wonderful to watch. And she was just a normal salary woman who just uh, ended up getting a wife and a daughter by complete chance. But she does the best she could. And my God, is it wonderful. It's so touching. I She is one of my favorite accidental moms. <laughs> Yeah, emphasis on accident. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah, because Kana comes there to, like, fuck up Kobayashi. Because he's like, you took away my... Was it Toru? Yeah, Toru. He's like, you took away my Toru. And then, like, then Kana just becomes, like, the cutest little daughter you could ever ask for. It's like... <sighs> yeah. <sighs> and eats everything in sight. Literally everything. God, could you imagine the grocery bill if you had to feed her in real life? You'd be broke within two weeks. Luckily, you don't have to. You grab her tail and literally just plug it into <laughs> the wall. Into That's the wall, literally yeah. all you yeah. need to She's do. An electric dragon. Or yeah, I can't say much about. I've only seen season of one of Dragon Maid, so I'm just like the motherly slash. I would say more fatherly, but whatever. <laughs> Role. The, I of... mean, the, the huge joke is uh, Kana actually does consider her uh, the father as well. Yeah, as because the Toru is the mom. Yeah, that that's what I assume. That's why I was like, "What? She's not a mom. She's a dad." <laughs> this is the weirdest the lesbian relationship <laughs> you've ever seen. It is. It really is. And um, yeah. So I was like, in season one, I don't think there's too many scenes of Kobayashi acting like a uh, parental figure to Kana. Not a ton. There's a little bit, but not a ton. Yeah. So I was like, I I, I can't say. Um, season two, they do a honestly they don't... surprising how. Surprisingly, how wholesome those moments are, because I, considering the author of Dragon Maze, oh, yeah. yeah, who has this I mean, hyper fixation with like tits. giant titties, giant tits, and shotas. I, it's amazing to me, given what I know about the author of of Dragon Maid, that the story doesn't go in a completely different direction. I'm glad it doesn't. Man made uh, one specific thing that has a couple of different things in it, and, you know, it's pretty good. But to be fair, character-wise, it goes exactly where I'm thinking it's going. Oh, sure, <laughs> or least, sure. Or at least character design-wise. Dude knows how to draw giant tits. What a, that's all I got to say. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, like, yeah. his signature style. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you really want to see uh, some good big tits uh, from him. Uh, read Chi Chi Chi. Oh it's my so god, no. Much. It's oh my so god, horny. No. Oh. It's so horny. That is, I know. I've read it. I know. I'm still reading it. <laughs> I'm, you know what? I'm going to move on. Um, I'm trying to oh. think. I, you know I, what? I got, I got no... a great. No, I got I got a great segue for this. Uh, speaking of uh, uh, of nice tits, Misato Katsuragi from Evangelion. <laughs> Let's go! Shinji, Shinji dropped a bag. <laughs> Listen, the, Shinji fumbled that ball harder than Jameis Winston. That's all I got to say. The original origin of a lot of people's mommy issues in anime. <laughs> 
a lot of people's hyperfixation on moms in anime <laughs> and mommies. <laughs> Literally, I was walking in the factory and someone on their water bottle has a Masato like sticker, like one no of those uh, peeking, peeking from the thing sticker, and I'm just like, God damn it! Everywhere <laughs> I go, it's always Misato. It's always I Misato. swear. I mean, can, they're not we, wrong. But... Can we all agree though that Shinji really fumbled that bag? I mean, if we ignore the fact that Shinji's supposed to be like what fourteen, that's not. And she's twenty seven. Yeah, let's let's not worry about that. Yeah, let's not think about that at all. <laughs> but I certainly would have if I were in Shinji's position. <laughs> no, that's gross. Stop being gross. Listen, is it really the fault of of the person being sexually assaulted if they get sexually assaulted? Oh my God, we're canceled, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Listen, I'm anime is fantasy. We can have our fantasies there. But, I mean, she's not much of a mom, though. No, but I call her mommy. She's a MILF. Yes. 100%. Yeah, she is a mother I'd love to finance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let me give you all my money. <laughs> Take all my money right now. She might not be a mom, but she has done a lot of motherly things. She is the mother figure to Shinji's life. I mean, when when Shinji first goes to Nur, wouldn't she's that be Ray? Kind but of okay. A figure. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you could you could argue she's a mother figure not just to Shinji but also to Asuka. Oh, that's very true. Yeah. No. And Asuka's mother issues are. I ain't touching that shit. Level. <laughs> She has a very unhealthy fixation with her mother. Um, who? Uh, but no, I. I mean, first of all, Misato hot. I, I'm gonna throw that out there, and she's 27, so there's nothing problematic about saying that. <laughs> You're just oh, saying God. that because of the leather mini skirt. Shut up. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> the leather mini skirt is what makes it. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. I know. I mean, it's the John is right beer, though. But right. <laughs> John is right, though. It's definitely a source of a lot of adolescent fantasies that have never left. <laughs> They've never this left. This where it all I started. Hear that. <laughs> so That's all I got, though. Grab Ida a leather miniskirt. Got it. <laughs> I hate all of this. I hate this entire conversation. I hate the fact that I, I brought this up. Uh, but I will say... Balalaika and Revy from Black Lagoon yes! give me mommy energy. Yes! Like, oh, hardcore. Hard. I didn't put them on my list because when I originally thought of this, I was like, oh, I'm just going to do like moms that I respect and be like, you know, power rank moms. Like, these are good moms. Take care of their kids. But if I had, because uh, Alex did ask me, like, did I have anyone in mind in particular? And I'm like, yeah, Revy and Balalaika from Black Lagoon. <laughs> like, let me tell you about mommy energy. Like, oh, <laughs> yes. Fuck. And, As Spike uh, Spiegel my... once said, sometimes I just want a woman that can kick my ass. No, I, I love me. I love a woman that can kick my ass. Yeah. <laughs> He's right. Don't, don't know why. It's just so much more attractive. And I will say, um, mm. Revy may be just someone who's like a wild, rambunctious animal who will kick your ass, but she got mommy mm. energy. But Balalaika is not rambunctious she can also kick your ass but also she acts like a mom anyway because she you know she's in charge of her entire group mm. she's got that all according to the Kai all according to the keikaku energy it's like she's I mean, always she took care of her soldiers in the war and after the war so it's just like you know yeah. she's a good caretaker in my opinion she got to do what's yeah. necessary yeah sometimes you got to do what you got to do john yeah no and then she um... didn't care if it was right or not she just did it well, it's right for her and her well, group. Right for her. That's yeah. She in protects her, the pack in her mind. Yeah. yeah, she's like a mama bear. Yeah. Um, just gonna, just gonna make a joke about women picking the bear, but never mind. Never mind. Um, speaking of mommy energy, I see that you wrote down here, Chinoda S death. Hmm. S death. Uh... The only Ooh. good thing about a comic I kill. <laughs> I yeah, not the do only. not like a comic got kill. Yep. You've heard so multiple times. I do like S Death. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, John. her design? Bro. Woo. God damn. I just, 
I'm just saying, she got the most fan art for a reason. <laughs> yeah. She got the outfit, the strut, the energy. Oh my god. When she uh, strode into the scene in A Comic Got Kill, I was just like, hello, cool character. Then she started talking, I'm like, word? <laughs> like, <laughs> hi there. No, she's legitimately coolest fuck character and like, the biggest fucking dummy mommy energy I have ever seen. And I yeah, if it wasn't for the it. fact that she was a uh, genocidal maniac, then, you know, she's Bro, on that's list what too. makes me go over no. I love that shit. Oh, God. <laughs> Will it ever end? This is, this is the dude that looks at world history and just looks at, like, Mao and Hitler and is like, hmm? Alex, it. why'd you make it, it weird? You yeah, it why'd weird. you gotta make it weird? God, I was making it weird. <laughs> he's like, he's sitting there thinking, okay, listen, she she caused genocide, but hear me out, hear me out. <laughs> I can fix her. I want to fix her. The fuck? <laughs> I like hey, her man. broken. <laughs> she's not broken. That's just her. That's her personality. She's perfect. she's not <laughs> broken. She's shattered. I hate hate all of this. And all of it. <laughs> Just like to point out, you're the one that asked the question initially, man. I know. This is repercussions of my actions. I didn't think this through. Um, Speaking of someone who's uh just a bit broken, can we talk about the major? I would love to talk about the major from Ghost in the Shell. Uh, so I put the major uh, on my list for a couple of reasons. Number one, she can step on me any day. But number two, like, in terms of like the, her co-workers at Section 9, she is kind of like a mother figure to a lot of them. Especially it's... since she has a lot more experience than a lot of them. And she's typically on the front lines where most of them are not. I don't know. She's kind of like the dad, in my opinion, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, have you seen those muscles she got? Mm -mm. Listen, I'm just saying, I think Bato is probably more like the mom for, for their group. <laughs> He's always got to clean up after the major, so like, <laughs> Bato does have like that that very soft, caring energy right after he shoots someone in the face. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't put her name here, Matoko Kusanagi. Matoko Kusanagi. Uh, when I originally added it, I was on uh, mobile and I could not for the life of me remember how she spelled the name. Matoko Kusanagi. I can probably spell it out, What's but I just, it was it was a lot easier to type out the major on my phone. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember, knew you all uh, would know what I meant. Of course, like we know who the major is. Yeah, who, like, Ghost in the Shell. I don't even have to say the major from Ghost in the Shell. If I just say the major, everyone knows who I mean. It's one of those um, iconic. Characters. I think probably for old anime fans. I don't think new anime fans even know what Ghost in the Shell is. <laughs> a couple, which of is them a great do. Shame. Most of them don't. It's a great shame. Because Ghost in Shell is fantastic, and everyone should. I don't watch think it. any of them are Pavlov to know who the major is, like we are. <laughs> or every time we hear the major in our minds, we hear Matoko Kusanagi. <laughs> uh, no, that's the whole reason I put her here. I, I I love Ghost in the Shell, but I also love the character of the major for how she protects and takes care of all the members of Section Nine under her command. Um, and they all like follow her almost religiously. That's true. That is actually very true. Um, it, I almost feel like if something were to happen, well, I guess something kind of did happen in the most recent one, but we don't talk about the most recent Ghost of Shell because it's, it's not that great. Um, but I feel like if something ever happened and they were all forced to split up, they would all just still follow her wherever she went. <laughs> I don't know about that. Like that's a maybe, but they no, are that's incredibly a, no, low. No, <laughs> no, that that is a definite yes. They they did do that they, actually. Did they? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Have you seen Twenty Forty Five? Unfortunately. No. Okay. Not, yeah, but unfortunately. You don't need to watch it. It's not anywhere near as good as uh, Standalone Complex. That's for sure. Not only is like the three D only... bad, like the writing isn't as good as the old ones too. Oh yikes! I've only yeah, seen a lot of... the um, first Ghost in the Shell movie, and um waiting for the second one now the only uh we should actually do a movie review on ghost in the shell too 
Um, that's a very underrated movie. Um, Have we not? We've no. done a we've done a movie review of the first Ghost in the Shell movie from '95, but we've never done a a review of Innocence. Oh, but we oh. really should put it on the list of other movie reviews that we have to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, I forgot where I was going with this. Um, well, oh yeah, now for something uh, completely different. <laughs> well, I was gonna say the only good thing about 2045 is that they kept all the same voice actors. That's literally yeah. the only really <laughs> that, good thing that's about it. The only it. thing I can really give props to is like, hey, at least all the original people reprise their roles. Yeah, uh, at least in the Japanese dub. I don't know for the English dub. Uh, in the English dub as well. Oh, okay, that's, that's good. cool. That's actually yeah. Good. Mary Elizabeth McGlynn is still the major. Awesome. She's yes. always going to be the major. Her voice is always going to be the major to me. I wonder if she hates being typecasted like that, though. Like you're known, you're mostly well known for one role. There, well, I know her. I, I know her from two roles because she was the major, obviously, in Ghost in the Shell. But she's also Kuranai from Naruto. Oh, is she really? Yeah, she's the uh, English voice of Kuranai for in Naruto. Oh, oh shit, that's cool. I didn't watch Naruto in English, so I don't know. <laughs> I've never first. watched Naruto in Japanese. <laughs> What? You've never watched Naruto in Japanese? I never have. I've always only watched the English dubs. Hmm. I don't know if that makes me a good or a bad Naruto fan, but it makes me a fan nonetheless. No, it just makes you a fan. <laughs> no problem with that. I mean, yeah. I whatever. can't believe that Miley Flanagan is still voicing Naruto after all these years. <laughs> anyway, anyway, moving on. I want to talk about actual good mothers who aren't just mm -hmm. mommies okay i want to talk about <laughs> i guess i could uh i could summarize two of them in the same one but i mean talk about sanai uh furukawa uh nagisa's mom from clanad mm -hmm. um i like her because she's fun she's bubbly she can't bake for shit <laughs> <laughs> the relationship that she has with um her husband is really funny but the better thing... I have to cough. I have to cough. I have to cough. Uh -oh. oh, he coughed. There we go. I coughed. But the other thing was that um, when she was having Nagisa and she became a mother, she decided, oh, you know what? I used to be a theater actor, and she was actually pretty good at it. But she gave up on her dreams to, like, help raise her daughter because her daughter is in poor health. She's, like, needs to be taken care of all the time, so you have to, like go and do something else as they open up a bakery when she can't bake <laughs> <laughs> this poor woman big sad I would listen it's not the only bread. big sad thing in clan ad yeah i, I know, know. Like, well i just really like her because you know again she's she's loving she's caring uh she's funny she's bubbly she tries her best and she gave up she's it's, it's about the self-sacrifice she gave up on her dreams and aspirations to raise her daughter because she loves her daughter and i'm just like it's a good mom right Who, there. That's not the only mom. character in Clan Ad that has to do that, by the way. Has to give up on a dream. Who else? What? I, I can't say without spoilers, John. I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it afterwards. Anyway, uh, also the mom from Toradora, Yasuko Te uh, Takasu. Uh, that's Ryuji's mom. And when you first meet her, you think she's like she's kind of just a stumbling mess, you know? She can't take care of herself. This generic and that. And anime mom number twelve. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like she, I believe she's a hostess. She works at a host as a hostess at a hostess bar or something or a bartender. I don't remember. I don't remember her job. She works at night and she works long hours. And it seems like she's uh, slovenly, lazy, and like is kind of like a airheaded mom. But we learn throughout the series that. No, she's actually not. And um, specifically, it's like she tells Ryuji, like, the reason why I don't want you to get a job is, like, she's always tired from working and it's she's always working so much. It's not just because it's like she's a single mom, but it's because she doesn't want Ryuji, her son, to have to work. She wants him to enjoy his youth to the fullest. So she works extra hard at her job to make money and make ends meet. And it's just like respect, self-sacrifice, you know, after the dad passed away. I believe the dad passed away. Or something. Yeah, the dad passed away. Yeah, She just raised her son on her own and decided, I want the best for my kid. And I want him to live a full life. And if that means working 20 hours a day and having to freaking 
work as a hostess, like whatever. And I'm just like, it's a good mom. It's a good mom, loving, caring. Yeah. Uh, yeah, both of those, both of the characters you're talking about here, uh, Sane from Clan Ad and Yasuko from Toradora, like the amount of, of things they had to give up and self-sacrifice is crazy for their kid. Yeah, you know, to be, <laughs> that's what makes you an S-tier mom, right? It's yes, all about the self-sacrifice. Exactly. That's what the or S stands just... for, self-sacrifice. <laughs> let's, to me, that's what a, a parent should do, right? Like, this is your progeny. This You should be doing the best that you can. Yeah, not for just your moms. Children. Like, dads should yeah, do this, too. Dads do that, too, yeah. I mean, a lot of my top dads are like that, too, so. I mean, that, that's, I, thinking back to the episode we did for Father's Day all those years ago, um, it's kind of the same conclusion that we came to back then. It's like the best dads do what they think are best for their kids. And sometimes it means they have to sacrifice a lot of their own life for their children. Yeah. I don't remember if I was on that episode or not. I don't Maybe. remember off the top of my head if you were uh, not either. If you I know, don't... let us know down below. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you remember. And, um, yeah. I mean... I don't want to talk about anyone on your list anymore, Alex. Your entire list wow. makes me sad. Wow. <laughs> um, I'm going to finish off my list. I'm going to talk okay, about okay. Uh, Clara Magnolia from Violet Evergarden. All now, right. this mom isn't a great mom because of self-sacrifice uh, necessarily. But in if, ever, if anyone's ever watched Violet Evergarden, you know it's about um, some disabled woman writing letters for people uh, sum it up poorly <laughs> yeah, very, that is a very poor summation of Violet Evergarden <laughs> make it but, sound like the most boring anime ever when it's one of the best written anime ever no it's ever. fucking amazing it's oh god it's so good uh, but the scene with so Clara is a um, mom who is terminally ill she doesn't have a lot of time left and she um, gets Violet to write letters for Clara to give to her daughter because she's like, you know, I don't want to leave my daughter alone, so I want you to write letters for the next 50 years that she'll get, like, I believe it's once a year or once a month. I don't remember how, how many letters. I think it was, like, yeah, I think it was 50 letters, one one letter a year. It might have been. I don't remember, if actually. I, if I remember right, it's something like For her that. birthday, right? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Yeah, the, the letters like, are delivered on her birthday every year. Bro, that is so fucking sad. Like, yes. fuck. <laughs> Uh, that whole episode is sad as hell. Violet Evergarden is just fucking sad. Yes. <laughs> that episode but, is one of the few reasons why I can't ever rewatch Violet Evergarden. Oh, man. Fucks you up too much, dude. It, it does. Really does. Oh. I'm tearing up especially thinking about that, it. Especially <laughs> the I'm, scene I'm at the end. I'm getting fucked up over it. It's especially that the scene at the end of that episode where um, it's like a montage of the chi of the child character going through their life and mm -hmm. having those letters read. Oh Bro. my god! Oh, killing me, tearing up, tearing up. Woo. And the mom, like the mom's letters, are like, "You must be like ten years old now. I bet you're really cute." <laughs> it's like, oh god. <laughs> oh. yeah. Um, that. I don't know. Well, I don't know necessarily self-sacrifice, but you're definitely it's leaving a legacy for your child. Well, it's it's the the compassion and the care that she has for her kid, right? That's the yeah. the, the type of motherly love that even in death I still want to be with you. I yeah. want you to know that you, I'm I'm I was, you know, I I want you to know that I'm still here. Kind of like it's like, "Oh, that's so sad." That's Which so is sad. weird for me. Uh, I don't know if you guys feel the same way because like my parents are getting up there in age and yeah. it's something they never really tell you how to deal with like watching your parents age now i know it, that's not what the whole story of clara is about but it is about like coming to terms with your own death and how your children are going to face it and as someone who's watching my parents age i'm like ooh, i'm getting they're getting at an age now where i have to think about what's going to happen at the end of their life how do I, how do I, as their child, deal with that? I mean, I can tell you how you're supposed to deal with it if you're Asian. <laughs> don't. <laughs> no, you take care of them. We respect oh. our elders. Yeah. yeah. I thought you were going to be like the culture. whole stoic Asian thing. It's like, mm, just go, just move on. No, no, no. no, no as they no. age, we take care of them. Like, hmm. 
we I bring them in know. our into our houses. Uh, we have them uh, take care of each other uh, with our nuclear family. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah, it's just weird. No one ever tells you how to prepare to watch your parents age. It's, I'm at that point in my life where it's weird seeing my parents as old as they are now. Well, I fortunately had the um, experience of having to take care of my grandmother before she passed. So I mm. I, I know how it's going to feel. It's going to feel the exact same way all over again. Yeah. It's yeah. going to fucking suck, but it it still needs to be done. Yeah. They still need to be taken care of. But with the thing with Clara, it's like, God, I, I would hope if I were a parent and that was going to happen to me. I would be able to do something like that for my children. Leave them something behind like that, whether it's letters or or something that they get periodically to not only remember me, but to make it feel like they're not alone. Well, the beauty of it is that we live in a world where we can just record videos. Yeah. That's like what we're doing right now. <laughs> like what we're doing right now. Yeah. God, that, that would fuck me up. Make a movie about a dad or a mom leaving behind for their children because they know they have a terminal illness. Like, 20 years of videos. So, you uh, you could actually do that, though, with on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. No, you could do Put it, it up... with YouTube because you can schedule um, uploads. Yep. So, you can yeah. schedule them to go out, like, once a year. That would fuck me up. Oh. Man, someone should write a movie about that. That actually would work. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That'd be too hard to watch, I'll be honest. I don't think I could. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Just get, try to make this not sad anymore. <laughs> yeah, please, someone make this not sad. All right, all right. Um, let's... Explain to me why you put Chica. All right. Yes, Chica, please. Chica Fujiwara. She is one of the best moms ever. Because she raised that boy. She raised that boy. <laughs> She raised the president. Oh my god. Dude, dude's basing all of this on a single line in the show. <laughs> well, it's a single line, but it encompasses quite a lot of her character because Chica yeah. had to do so much for the president. <laughs> like, it's funny, it's a meme. And when you originally put that, I was like, did did the author release like epilogue chapters that I don't know about? Like, what is this? What are you no, talking no. about? <laughs> Entirely amazing. Dude thought there was hidden content he didn't know about. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's John exactly was upset. That's what... <laughs> What are you saying? I didn't read all of the source. What? <laughs> He's gonna go is... flip through all the books. Like, where is it? <laughs> but no. Oh, uh, it is a joke. But at the same time, a little bit. Of it. No, she actually did help. Uh, Karen raise for uh one of her friends and help him grow up. And it is a motherly thing that she did. And, I love her. You know, she, she's a joke. Shirogane doesn't have a fun. mom. And Shirogane does not have a mom. So. He looks well, to some. He has a mom, but he doesn't have a mom. Uh, I wouldn't call her. She's a shitty mom. Yeah, she, it's usually the dad's the deadbeat. It's the mom that's deadbeat in this relationship. Yeah. Turns out Dio's a great dad. <laughs> <laughs> not actually yeah. Dio, though. No, not actual. Uh, no, no, like not actual are, Dio. The, no. the actual Dio's a for... terrible father. Yeah, terrible father. <laughs> The voice actor for uh, Papa Shirogane is uh, Dio's voice actor. <laughs> That's the joke. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd agree that uh, when Chica interacts with Shirogane, like, she's playful and stuff, like, as friends, but whenever she has to teach him, she's very serious and like, all right, I'm going to help you learn this skill. <laughs> and even though, like, she, <laughs> she doesn't, even though she regrets it all the time, she continues to do it anyway. <laughs> And the one time he said, okay, fine, I'll go to someone else since you hate doing it. She got so fucking mad about it. She was like, no, you come to me. I'm your mother. <laughs> <laughs> I also thought it was funny when she was like, um, her younger sister was like, President Shirogane is so cool. It's like, don't be disillusioned by him. <laughs> he's not what you think he is. And then it turns out like he's actually decent at whatever it was, and it, it impresses his, her little sister even more. And she's like, "Why? Why is this the one thing it's that you know how to do?" Thing. <laughs> <sighs> I love Love Is War. It's so funny. I know it's Alex hates it, but no, I don't hate it. I just didn't think the first season was very good. Hate it with a passion. 
Alex, maybe you should try reading the manga for it. We both love it. Just Alex I mean, maybe the manga, manga is though? better than the anime. From what I hear, the first season, even by people who love it, isn't that good. No, no, the first season is like kind of like okay. Yeah. yeah. The second funny. season and and, and to above, be fair, it's like... the only part. It's the only thing I have seen, so it's the only thing I have to judge it by. Yeah, I'd say the first season is. I don't think it's bad, uh, but I, I just think it's okay. I fucking but loved yeah, it. season two and above they they pulled out all the stops with the animation and all that stuff. Mm. I don't know. I don't hate it. I just thought that the first season was just eh. He's lying. I know he what hated he said. It. I hated remember it. exactly what you said about it. <laughs> I mean, I never liked the character of Cheek anyway, so. I know that's some kind of absolute heresy. Go in and talk about your other dommy mommies. Let's end this off with all your freaking dommy mommies. Yes, although one of them really isn't a dommy mommy. I actually have Ron here because I think she's a genuinely good mother. And I'll talk about her first. Zenith Greyrad from Mashoka Tensei. She's like a genuinely cool mom. No, she is. She and is also beats the shit out of her cheating husband. <laughs> <laughs> Not like she's she's the cool mom. She's like she lets Rudy kind of do whatever, like do his own thing. But she's also like the kind of person who knows when to pull the reins back. It's like Rudy, you're going a little too far. Don't. She <laughs> gives a good guiding hand, so to speak. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She's the kind of mom who will let you explore what you want to do and kind of go your own way, but she'll also pull you back when she realizes you're going too far. I can't wait for the next season of Mishoko Tensei. <laughs> <laughs> this dude, this dude like has so much anything. future knowledge. <laughs> I, I, th if, if Mishoko Tensei season two, part two is going to end where I think it's going to end, then yeah, I'm probably, I'm probably waiting more excited for the next season than this season. I'm excited for it too because, like, I fucking love Mishoku Tensei. And I'm really happy to see Zenith on screen again, please. Yeah, I was, uh, I was talking to my coworker because he was like, he's like, so Mishoku Tensei, like, he, re he only reads the manga, and it's like, I read the web novel. And I was like, yeah, uh, where we're at in season two, part two, right now for Mishoku Tensei, that's volume 11. Oh. Out of 23, 26? Oh. <laughs> We're not even halfway. <laughs> All I know is whatever <laughs> has happened to her, it's going to be, she's going to be okay, or it's been pretty fucking terrible. Either way, yes. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I mean, we'll find out. <laughs> Mashoka <laughs> Tensei, it's a pick em. It's 50 50. It could be either one. And it could be when you get there and she's fine, and your arrival causes a series of very unfortunate events. Uh, but not it's his face. <laughs> Can't, Can't say, say shit. Yeah, John's say like, I know, I know. I do like how in our Discord server recently you were like, haha I told when, when that when you were saying all that shit before, I told you, I told you, like, I knew. Oh, the Ellen East thing, because you were like. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that spoiler. <laughs> no, we're not going to talk about it now, but you know what I'm talking about. And I was like, yeah, I knew. I didn't care. <sighs> disgusting. Absolutely <laughs> disgusting. Not uh, even. That's not even no, written Zen in fiction. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I, I, lo I love Zenith. I hope to see more of her in um, upcoming seasons or episodes of Mushoku Tensei, even if I got to wait a whole other season. I'm sure we will. Uh, uh, now let's talk about some absolute fucking mommies for just a moment. <sighs> I I would be remiss because I know we got Class Ulysses who shows up to a ton of our streams and watches all the episodes of our podcast and is a very active member of our Discord server, which you can join down below. Um, loves, 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 loves Naruto and particularly loves Hinata. So man's I'm going to talk about taste. Hinata. <laughs> like the dude, got very good taste. <laughs> So, Class Ulysses, this is for you right here. We're going to talk about Hinata and goddamn those hips. Holy fuck. Talk about childbearing. Woo! Mm. Can I just say, I remember when uh, Naruto first, like, aired, and it was the whole, like, 
oh, he likes Sakura, and it's like Hinata likes him, but it'll never be come to fruition, this and that, right? I was just like, yeah. my first original ship was Naruto and Hinata, yeah. and boy, did so I it was fucking mine. win. Did I fucking win? It was Listen, amazing. you had to wait a long time for it, but it was worth Literally the fucking over wait. Literally a decade. Literally. It was well worth the wait. Now, I don't know how good of a mother Hinata is, because I don't watch Boruto, I don't read Boruto, I don't excellent. know nothing about... She's an excellent She's mother. a good mother. No, not I, not. I figured, she's I mean, not she was good. always she's excellent. She was always loving and caring anyway. Like, oh god, after the was it the tuning exams where she's like, "Oh, Naruto, you're injured here. Let me use this healing salve on you." That was uh, during. I was like, was it during? Was during right, the yeah. exam. Yeah. Yep. I'm just like, that's my girl right there. I love this girl. <laughs> yeah, I, I always wanted Hinata and Naruto from the beginning, and I, I we got it, man. We got it. Our patience paid off. But yeah. Note is right. Like even in Boruto, as much as I shit on it, uh, she is a good mother in in the show. Um, and it's it's actually the scenes with her are usually pretty heartwarming. To be perfectly honest, yeah, because like she she essentially has retired from the ninja life. She's just a stay at home mom now. Oh, she's and, a housewife. Yeah. She is housewife. Yes, completely her own choice and everything. She just wants to be there, uh, help raise her kids, and take her uh, around the house. And she actually basically has three kids now uh, with Kawaki uh, joining them as well. I don't know who and this is. I don't know who that is. Basically, uh, Naruto ends up adopting a kid who was uh, created uh, as a weapon. TLDR. Oh. Yeah. Whole thing. There, there's um, a lot more to it than that. but that's There's a, a lot more, it. but I'm keeping it very light. But he ba he basically becomes part of the Uzumaki family, and it is so heartwarming. She she does her best with uh, changing circumstance, and she loves him just like her other kids, and it it's so wonderful to see. Yeah. Okay. And soccer, what you got over there? Nothing. That's what I thought. Fuck off. Oh my god, <laughs> bro! You got nutted so in one time, and he left. So much. He left. Bro, you made the joke already. It's old. I don't know. I, this is so funny to me. Um, I think it's funny. <laughs> I, the funniest I was the thing type of is guy that, to make the same joke fifty times. The funniest thing to me is that even Masashi Kishimoto is like, "Yeah, I kind of fucked up with Sakura." <laughs> like, yeah, Kishimoto, bro, we know. <laughs> we know he fumbled it. We, we know. To be fair, learned... like one of the most fair criticisms of Kishimoto is he's not good at writing women characters. And that's absolutely I found no. Curious. I found out recently. Dude's not good at writing. Period. I I literally learned this like two weeks ago. Is, I'm going way off track here, but I have to say this because I recently learned it. In the first like draft of Naruto's like first couple uh, chapters, Sasuke wasn't even a fucking character. He didn't exist. What? <laughs> what? I'm thinking to myself like Naruto's primary motivation through. A good deal of the first part of Naruto involves Sasuke. So what was Naruto going to be about without Sasuke? Well, the, about him just he must struggling have for the yeah. village? Like, what? I, it, I guess. guess. Other yeah. ways. Plenty I, I of guess, other stories that could have happened. It's just crazy to me that the original story did not have Sasuke as a character in it at all. And that was an editor's, like, suggestion. I don't think that's necessarily makes him a bad character or, or bad, bad writer I yeah think that's I, bad. I don't think that makes him a bad writer either like just because maybe not but i feel like I it's a lot like a lot like the first star wars movie it was saved in the goddamn edit i think that um the whole rival thing it brings a different dynamic to the story so it definitely changes the story mm -hmm. but i think kishimoto could have wrote something just Worse. as good oh yeah just as good. Just as good. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah just as good. I feel, In like, fact, I feel you... like I feel like there's stories that could work with that without the the rivalry dynamic. But it's like, well, man, because I I think well, of that when I think of Naruto. Look at um, look at all the scenes where he's not involved, right? Where hmm. Sasuke is not involved. It's not about uh trying to bridge the friendship and repair the relationship and to, like get like, get get this man back, right? Mm hmm. A lot of what Naruto does outside of that is still impactful. Like, the whole fucking um, Jiraiya stuff. You know, with yeah. Kane. Like, all of that. That doesn't involve Sasuke, does it? 
No, no, not at all. And the stuff with Gara, none of that involves. Yeah, Sa- exactly. Well, I mean, he's there, but it, he's not the focus of anything. Yeah, that's my point. Like, I that's why I think like that's. I I don't think it's fair to say that at all. Yeah. I just, fact, anyway, this is not a Naruto episode. This no, not Naruto. it was just wild to me learning that recently. It's I just can't imagine the first he- part of Naruto without Sasuke in it. I mean, that's why editors exist. They they have, yeah. they have suggestions. They're like, hey, we think this would like this is good, but it could be better if we yes. add this. That's what a good editor should do. It's like, hey, these ideas are good, these ideas are bad, and maybe add these things in. <laughs> yeah. And you go from uh, there. Yeah, moving on, because this is definitely not the Naruto uh, episode, nor how to edit 101. Um, how many more? I got two more left. Um, the last two I want to talk about um, are kind of related. Um, first one I want to talk about is Yor from Spy X Family. Um, Woo! Whew. Shoo! Um, she watched mommy. the movie yet? No, I have what? It came it's, out. Is it on, uh, Bro, it, it on came out in theaters. Is it on Crunchyroll yet? No, no, not yet. Oh. I'm gonna look it. Up. I'm gonna look this up. I, I'm. I don't have to do anything this weekend, so I'm. I might go it, watch it. It came out in theaters. I don't know. I don't think it's still in theaters. Bro, Long gone. Like anyway. Anyway, you're from Spy X Family. Um. This woman, first of all, hot as hell. Uh, second of all, step Absolute on me, please. Uh, thirdly, uh, my God, do you have the best motherly instincts with your totally not biological daughter? Um, I love watching the dynamic between your and Anya because it's like your has these abilities shall we say that she kind of has to hide but she also has to use them to keep Anya from killing herself all the time <laughs> all the freaking time <laughs> oh my god where there's that the scene in um, the second season where she's trying to chase down Anya I laugh my ass off during that because it's like bro you were doing all these abilities and shit in broad daylight people were seeing them and you just have the nerve to go <laughs> She is hilarious. She is beautiful. And she adopted uh, Anya so quickly. Like, I, I don't think she even thinks twice about the fact that she has a daughter now. She She's like, yeah, that's my daughter. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she does her utter, uttermost to take care of her as well. And it's so yeah. heartwarming. Like, oh, my God. And she looks like a baddie the entire time. She's oh, doing... she's a fucking baddie. Oh, my God. I think it's funny that it in in that show, if Yor wasn't there or Yor didn't look like she looked, all the attention would be on Anya. And I don't I mean all the good kind of attention either. I no, disagree. Freaking, I, think, um... I think Lloyd's a fucking hottie. I mean, okay, I Lloyd, mean, Lloyd's like... kind of Woo! a himbo. Well, I was gonna say, um, Fiona. Fiona would be the new like. Oh, Fiona's oh. also. I'm. I'm gonna just say, there's a lot of good Fiona X uh, your stuff out there. A mm. lot of good stuff. All I'm saying is, I want an alternate universe where Fiona's the mom in this situation, and I want to see that unfold as well. Because that, that to me, that seems hilarious. Where <laughs> she's madly in love with one guy, and he, he's just like, this is all just for the mission, and he's kind of scared of her. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I feel like that'd be a funny dynamic, too, you know? Like, I love your, but I just think the whole Fiona thing would be funny, too. Just all the characters in the show was so great. So freaking great. Oh, my goodness. Um, but yeah, your fucking lover. Um, and also, kind of in the same vein, I want to talk uh, briefly about uh, Akimi Aizawa, who is uh, Tomo's mom from Tomo Chen as a girl. Listen, I mentioned it before we started. She ticks two boxes for me, besides being a mommy. Uh, she's a tomboy. I fucking love tomboys. And she's a redhead. I adore redheads. Uh, so you put that combination together, I'm like, I'll sign the paperwork right now for us to get married. <laughs> First, you have to get past uh, Tomachan's dad. Yeah, no, really. 
Okay, how much do uh, karate lessons cost? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think. Bro, I don't think so. Bro, I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> he is a beast, though. He is a beast. Nah, I, <laughs> I adored that show probably more than I should have. Um, but it's almost mom just she made me feel some kind of way <laughs> listen the focus was supposed to be on the daughter and um june so it's like i think you're focusing on the wrong character aspects here in this show oh tell I me, I, so. trust me trust me that was oh that was that was fun to watch too but every time her mom was on screen i'm like i'm laser focused <laughs> all the moms in that show honestly just whoo True, although Carol's mom is a little too young. <laughs> what? No, no, she's not. Yeah, she... No, she she's Carol young she for like... how old her oh, daughter oh, I mean, is. Yeah. yeah, didn't she have Carol when she was like 14? Yeah. 13, 14, yeah. 13, so, yeah, 14, super I young. Think, yeah. I don't know. I, and I've heard people give a couple of different explanations as to why. I don't know for a fact if the author has ever given an explanation as no, to why. It said, it said in the manga why. Oh, well, I didn't read the manga. Yeah. If I don't, I, it never comes up in the anime. Fake fan. I yeah, haven't read um, the manga. The TLDR behind that is um, she was hooking up uh, with the dude. The dude the whole time thought she was an adult because she was very uh, mature physically. And she got pregnant. And uh, I'd use that excuse too. I mean, what? No, 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 no. He, he, he legitimately did not know. He, he didn't. Um, Ask for the ID. Yeah, no shit. Well, we're, we're, we're not, we're not going back that. Um, listen, if you have to ask for ID, I feel like you got other problems here, buddy. <laughs> like, hmm, I don't know. She looks kind of young. Let me ask for ID. Like, maybe you should take a step back, <laughs> or take a seat, or take a seat, or <laughs> take a seat. <laughs> but no, uh. It was explained. She got pregnant, ended up uh, giving birth, and like the dad paid for everything. He's like, "Let's, I'll pay for everything. Let's keep all this all quiet." Super man, shit. it must be nice to be rich. Yeah, dude's rich. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, now I know. Um, I always was curious about that. It's like when they they're talking about ages, I'm like something doesn't add up here. <laughs> She would have been like 13 when she had Carol. <laughs> yep. Uh that's all I really got uh for that. Both Yor and um Akemi Aizawa, they they kind of tick both the mommy like dummy mommy boxes, but they all or both of them seem like really genuinely good mothers too. Genuinely loving and caring, moms, yeah. And also uh Tomo's mom kind of encourages uh Tomo's tomboyishness so I'm like gotcha We're, we gotta hit we need more tomboys is what I'm saying we need them now there's a tomboy shortage man it's just anyway <laughs> that's the episode guys <laughs> John, John is so done with my shit yeah I gotta I gotta start packing <laughs> I'm hungry all right Half the right. freaking hour we've been talking about fictional mothers we'd like to f to finance. <laughs> <laughs> you almost said it. You almost said it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone uh, out there for dropping in to watch us uh, talk about this. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there who watch us for like the five women out there who watch our podcast. <laughs> um, also, uh, go, go call your mom. Tell her Happy Mother's Day. Tell her you love her. Um, but don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff down below if you like what you saw and want to see more. Also check down below where you can find links to all the stuff Anime Club After Dark does. Um, we also have a uh, merch store down there where you can uh, support the uh, channel, support the podcast. Um, but with all that, I have been your host, Alex, and we will see you next time. Say goodbye, guys. Good night. Happy Milfs. Mother's Day. <laughs> oh. Milfs. <laughs> Bye, Mom! <laughs> Forgot Judy was here. <laughs> uh.